Hello again. So in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how you can use one article to leverage your way into finding some other articles that might be related to your topic. And this is uh, something that where just for fun, I like to call it time travel with an article, because if you think about an article as sort of a snapshot in time around a particular topic, uh, in this case, I'm looking at the uh, nosocomial uh, bloodstream infections, uh, and I have that um, being talked about in this particular article. I'm going to be able to find other articles that have cited it, plus I can use the reference list in order to leverage my way into other sources. Now the tool that I'm going to be using in this process is Google Scholar. So it's scholar.google.com or you can Google your way to Google Scholar as well. And so the reason why I'm going to be using Google Scholar is because it's really good at doing that cited article activity and, and finding other sources that are um, being cited by different ones but if you're coming at uh, using Google Scholar from off campus you're going to want to connect it to the library subscription resources uh, so that it'll get you into those whenever we have access to something so in order to do that if you go to the bars and then you go to where it says settings and don't get confused by the my library because that that could kind of make you think that that's where the library stuff is but go into settings and then go to where it says library links and then search for WW. Make sure you tick the box next to the correct WW because there are a couple of them out there. Click Save. And now in your browser, uh, whenever you go to Google, Google Scholar, it's going to try and connect you to our subscription resources along the way. So going back to the article that I had um, just a moment ago, I um, since this article is a little bit on the older side, so it was published in 2004, uh, I want to see what other articles maybe have cited this because it's um, on that older side and I want to find stuff that's more current because uh, that's oftentimes a good idea when it comes to uh, medical related research. So I'm going to go ahead and put the title of the article. I'm going to copy and paste that into a search. And then when I search for it, I'm probably going to find an instance of that article coming up. So here's the article that I was just looking at. But now I want to be finding the other sources that have cited this particular source. Uh, one of the other things is that this uh, approach can be a really useful way to determine sort of the impact that an article has had, because you can see how many other people have uh, chosen to cite that source. And so in this case, there are 3,813 other uh, articles or papers out there or books that have uh, chosen to cite this particular source. That's that's sort of notable. That's uh, that's that's uh, kind of makes you, you know, pay attention to it. So if I want to find all those extra sources, then I can follow that link and it's going to get me to a lot of those extra sources. In this case, it does mean that it's a, a pretty big range of sources to be looking at. And so that can be one challenge to kind of uh, to, to work with, with. So I can um, search within the citing articles if I wanted to, so I could get a little bit more specific because uh, Google Scholar does not provide me with a lot of tools in order to do my uh, focusing. I don't have anything in terms of subject terms to build in the relevancy like I normally would with an academic research project. I could limit by a particular date range. So the things that are a little bit more common so, uh, since uh, 2014, then that may be a useful way to do it. So you do have a, a couple of different options, but um, again, not as much as you might have in some of the other databases, but then you can get those good leads to find uh, the sources too. And so if I have access, uh, it's gonna indicate that a couple of different ways, but if it's coming through the Western Library subscriptions, then I'm gonna see that find it at WW showing up on the right hand side. Uh, but this is also a way in which you can find some uh, free versions of PDFs that are also available um, on the um, sort of open web. Now I can take a very similar approach here by mining the reference list if I want to go backwards in time and find articles that um, that have been cited in here. So let's say I wanted to just go ahead and go with this uh, this older article here. I can copy and paste it over. Um, oftentimes what you're going to find is you're going to get some strange line breaks that come in with some of the PDFs. So you want to fix some of that and uh, get that figured out, especially if it's a scan PDF like I was just using. But Google Scholar can be pretty helpful at getting focused. I oftentimes like to use author names as a way to get more focused too, because those are um, oftentimes very specific. 
And so then once I find the source that I'm looking for, or sometimes this gives you some other interesting leads as well, then that's where I have my access links over on the right hand side that will actually get me to the article that I want itself.